Chattanooga is the fourth largest city in the state of Tennessee. It sits along the border of two states, Tennessee and Georgia, along the Tennessee River. As of 2020, the population came in at 181,099 residents, and that number is expected to increase due to the rapid growth in the metropolitan area. It is known for certain scenic city attractions, such as the Chattanooga Choo Choo, Ruby Falls, the Tennessee Aquarium, and Rock City. However, despite the city's largest tourist attractions, Chattanooga is also known for its deep, dark secrets of hauntings that plague the city. Whether it's the poltergeists that frequent hotels, the murdered Civil War soldiers that make appearances, the faded images of indigenous Native peoples dancing around campfires, or the sightings of the undead among cemeteries and college campuses, the city is filled with the repercussions of the past. Follow me down the rabbit hole as we explore more hauntings in my original hometown and uncover some of the most terrifying places to live and visit this is Haunted Hometown Horror Stories, Season 2. Welcome or welcome back to Shanae's Law. We are moving forward with our series, which is the Haunted Hometown Horror Stories here on Shanae's Law. And in this episode, we will be discussing the top three most haunted plantations in the state of Tennessee. Throughout this series on this channel, we have discussed the horrid atrocities that took place in Chattanooga and Tennessee State as well. From the barbaric slavery of African Americans, to the trail of tears for the Native Americans, and the American Civil War and the American Revolutionary War that were fought on its soil. For centuries, Tennessee profited off of slavery, and its deep, dark history is filled with the suffering, misery, cruelty, and pain of its victims who were kidnapped from their homes and forced to work on the farms and properties in this area. And these times, a person in Tennessee could own over 300 slaves at a time. However, there were some cases where 42 people owned at least 100 plus slaves. Consequently, there's no wonder why the state is plagued with such a dark cloud within its atmosphere. In this video, we will explore three of the most haunted plantations in the entire state of Tennessee. Wheatlands Plantation in Surville, Tennessee. Now the first of the haunted antebellum houses in Tennessee that we are going to review is the Wheatlands Plantation in Surville, Tennessee. It is located within the Wares Valley in Surville, Tennessee, along with Dollywood. It is now known as a small tourist attraction town with comical restaurants, but that is its claim to fame present day. The city has a deep dark past too. Wheatlands was named after its notable annual wheat crop. It also has a family farm established by the Revolutionary War veteran named Timothy Chandler in 1781. His son John took over the land in 1819. John took things to the next level by growing the farm to be one of the most expensive plantations in Serville County with 3,700 acres of property. The Wheatlands Plantation can be found along the State Highway 338 and Cider Springs Valley Road in the Boyd's Creek community. It sits along the French Broad River, which allowed them access to the entire nation's waterways. This gave the plantation an advantage over the other landlocked plantations. Also, State Highway 338 once followed a section of the Native American foot trail called the Great Indian Warpath. Consequently, things got real back in 1780 when John Sever followed that path and got into a battle with the Cherokee people. This battle became the Battle of Boyd's Creek. 
where it took place in the exact spot as the Wheatlands Plantation. This means that the property was one of the South's largest slave plantations and also wronged the Native Americans by having a bloody battle there with them too. At its prime, the plantation was worth over $215,000. Timothy Chandler owned 15 slaves who took care of the farms, animals, and crops there. Once the Civil War ended, the slaves were free with the option to continue to work at the plantation for a wage. Some of them accepted the offer, and when Chandler died in 1875, the free slaves inherited parts of Wheatlands. They created Chandler Gap Community in the hills near the end of the plantation. In essence, the plantation had over 70 murders and deaths occur within the home, which adds to the gruesome and dark history. The property's grounds served as battlefields for both American Revolutionary and Silver American Wars. Not to mention the 28 Cherokee people that were slaughtered during the Battle of Boyd's Creek. Those buried bodies can be found in a mass grave behind the property's grounds along with the 50 to 70 slave grave sites of African American slaves are also found on the property. It is also reported that a couple of American Revolutionary War soldiers are buried there too. Now let's get into these hauntings. Due to its horrific past and history of violence, Wheatland Plantation is one of the most haunted plantations in the country. Consequently, people have reported seeing many apparitions on the grounds to this very day. It has been reported that some of the ghosts wandering around the property are actually members of the Chandler family, whom were the plantation's original habitants. Paranormal investigators have also captured sounds of Native American chanting noises during a spirit box session. Things are even creepier in the Wheatlands Plantation basement where it has been reported people have felt the presence of children. On another note, investigators stated that they had difficulty breathing down in the basement and one of them even began to cry uncontrollably for no given reason. Other reports mention either sensing the presence of unseen persons or seeing ghostly figures throughout the estate. For instance, some visitors reported entering the parlor and being greeted by gruesome blood stains embedded into the floorboards that were a result of a son being slain by his father. This story is one of the most popular hauntings in Wheatlands. Other visitors complained about hearing a man yelling, constant strange thuds, and a disgusting gurgling noise. They all say it sounds familiar to a murder being played out continuously. Visitors also claim that the deceased Chandler family members are still hanging out in the home's hallways and surrounding garden areas on the property after all these years. Also, some say that the spirits of enslaved children have been seen running around the property playing games such as hide and seek with the visitors who see them and giggling while playing amongst themselves. There has also been sightings of a young woman in a blue dress roaming around the house and running up and down the stairs in the home. Reports of shadows and objects moving when no one is there have been reported as well as voices coming from the gravesite areas on the property. There was actually an anonymous visitor on the Wheatlands estate that described an encounter about the energies within the house. She said she and her children arrived at Wheatlands in the autumn for a lesson over their Dollywood vacation and the dark history of the property. Ironically, her son told her that he was feeling very scared as they toured the home. However, his fear only worsened as soon as they left the house. He stated that he felt like he was going to faint. However, he was not sweating and the outside temperature was around 70 degrees. Still, he did faint from all heat stroke symptoms. After receiving medical attention, the young boy told his mother that he saw the spirit of a young black boy dripping wet. He said that the spirit seemed really upset, ran towards his body and hit him in the chest. The impact caused him to lose consciousness. The boy's mother was so shocked by the story that her son told her they left and never came back. Nonetheless, it is not far-fetched that horrible things are happening in the presence of Wheatland's visitors due to such a horrible, racist, and violent past. After all, the original builder of the property was a Freemason and he purposely built it on top of a giant geod which is known to have electromagnetic capabilities. This would explain why the lands have an attraction for death and disaster. Now present day, the last remaining of the property includes the plantation home itself, an old smokehouse, 
and a few storage sheds. The items have been placed on the National Registry of Historic Places list. The home has also been noted to be, quote, the best example of a federal style building remaining in the county of Server County, along with its unique architecture. And for our second one, <laughs> Carton Plantation in Franklin, Tennessee. The Carton Plantation was built in 1826. It played a vital role in the American Civil War after the Franklin Battle that took place there. The 11 room red brick structure was envisioned by a politician named Randall Metgavik and structured by slaves. The limestone foundation that it was built on is said to amplify the spiritual activity that occurs there. The mansion itself served as the family home of the Megaviks. However, on the evening of November 30th, 1864, things changed for them drastically. The Confederate Army of Tennessee violently attacked the Federal Army's trenches along with the bottom end of Franklin, Tennessee. This resulted in yet another one of the bloodiest and violent moments in the American Civil War history. Only five hours into the battle, over 9,500 soldiers were either injured, captured, counted as missing in action, or murdered. Shortly after, many of these wounded fighters were treated at the Carson Plantation. Consequently, the Carton home eventually became a hospital and a significant headquarters to treat injured war soldiers. It was reported that 300 soldiers were brought to the mansion the first night of the battle and half of them died in there. The floorboards were heavily stained with the blood of wounded patients, especially the south facing bedrooms. Those were used as operating rooms. Many spiritual people believe that the spirit of someone is in their blood and possibly the blood-stained floorboards could serve as a portal for them to stay in this realm. As a result of the battle on the property, the soldiers that died at the Battle of Franklin were also buried there. It is reported that 1,750 men were murdered during the battle. 150 died on the property's grounds and 300 were treated for serious injuries. As a result, the Carson Plantation's unique front porch overlooks the graveyard where at least 1,700 of those Confederate soldiers are buried. Also, four generals' bodies who died in the battle were laid out on the back porch for a few hours after the battle ended so that survivors could pay their respects later on. As of early 1866, two acres of the Carson Plantation were officially labeled as the final resting place for the Confederate soldiers that died during the battle on these grounds. Eventually, the Carson Plantation was placed in a National Register of Historic Places. In 1977, the mansion and its 10 acres were donated to the Carton Association. Since then, it has been restored and renewed for the public. Now these hauntings though. With 1,700 Confederate soldiers buried at the Carton Plantation, it is the largest Confederate cemetery in the southern region of the United States of America. Consequently, this could be an explanation as to why so many different witnesses have given accounts about seeing ghosts of Confederate soldiers lurking around the mansion and its surrounding grounds. Sources also state that there are other spirits that roam around the territory and not just the soldiers. For instance, some state that the spirits of the Carton children still reside in their former home due to only two out of five living to become adults. Witnesses say that they've seen a young girl in the kitchen of the home whom is believed to have been murdered before the war by a jealous hostile suitor that she rejected. I guess he didn't take rejection too well. Uh, a lot of men still can't. Uh, anyway, this ghost is said to be sweeping the floors at dusk at the mansion. Moreover, it is reported that the ghosts prefer the autumn months out of the year probably due to the summer heat causing people to seek refuge in the house or in other cooler places. However, visitors report a lot of activity during dusk around October and the consequent months that follow. For example, they saw an apparition of a woman floating across the back porch and sometimes ghosts of former soldiers in the property's fields can be seen. They also saw a Confederate general pacing the front of the bottom porch. There's also sightings of a rather mischievous spirit that is reported frequently by visitors. Even the home's curator heard strange noises and investigated to find that the commotion was actually coming from the enclosed back porch. Upon her arrival, 
she discovered that two glass panes had been taken down from a shelf and placed up against the back door. She believed that this was the spirit of a young girl that was murdered by her rejected suitor that we discussed earlier. On other occasions, the floating head of the cook who previously worked for the Carton family during the Civil War has been seen floating throughout the hallway and kitchen areas. The cook can also be heard rushing around the kitchen, fulfilling duties here in the afterlife just the same as she did when she was living. There are also reports of another ghost that is stated to be a lady in all white a war soldier, a young girl with long brown hair, and a set of Native American spirits that have been known to frequent the back porch, the mansion bedrooms, as well as the surrounding areas of the plantation. That was even a really wild report of a visitor whose ancestor actually fought in the Battle of Franklin. According to an article from the Haunted Houses website, it states, quote, a man, Mr. P, who had an ancestor fight in the Franklin battle came at just after 5 o'clock p.m. to see the Carton Mansion, but it was closed. So he walked around the place and got up on a path that led him to the back of the mansion, trying to soak up the atmosphere and thinking about his relative who fought there and survived. Near the porch, he saw the silhouette of a man that he thought was about to get on a horse, but then the horse vanished. Noticing another man on the porch, Mr. P asked him what had happened to the horse. The man explained that the horse had been shot from under the other soldier as his horse had been earlier. End quote. Now the two men that Mr. P saw were actually ghosts and not actual human beings. He talked to the two soldier spirits and inquired about the life his ancestor led and his experiences in the war. Amazingly, Mr. P may have missed the regularly scheduled tour of the grounds, but his own journey wandering around the grounds led him to a paranormal experience. However, other visitors aside from Mr. P has reported seeing those same two men on the plantation as well as their ghostly stallions roaming around. Present day, you too can visit 1345 Carnton Lane in Franklin, Tennessee to attempt to experience your own paranormal experiences. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Penhook Plantation House located in Calhoun, Tennessee. Now, according to the Southeastern Tennessee records, the Penhook Plantation House was built in 1810 by the Alexander family. They are believed to have moved from Asheville, North Carolina area to the newly built city of Calhoun, Tennessee. This region is adjacent to the Hawassi River, which made it an attractive spot for farming. On another note, the Alexander family owned black slaves and those slaves laid down most of the foundation that the plantation house stands on, even present day. Records show that a deed of sale from 1843 is the only item left regarding a bill of sale for the property due to a courthouse fire that destroyed all of the local property records in 1830. Moreover, a long time rumor that a part of the Underground Railroad actually ran through the Penhook Plantation during the Civil War. There is an underground brick room where the railroad supposedly functioned and it is rumored that a slave once perished down there. However, the remains were never recovered and later the room was bricked and filled up after the Civil War was over. The Haunting just like the other two mentioned plantations, paranormal activities have occurred at Penhook as well. Throughout the years, many ghosts have reported while staying at the Penhook plantation that they saw an apparition that is known as the Lady in Grey. She is known to dress like a lady from the Civil War period and her dress of choice is a grey flowing number that makes her memorable. Some guests have stated to have seen her open the front door of the Penhook home turn around and then immediately ascend the staircase while fading before the eyes of the spectators. Other reports mention a monk who once held a meeting with other apparitions in a gathering room. The property owners attempted to make the home reminiscent of its vintage southern charm and decided to put rocking chairs on the porch and as well as in the actual home for the guest. However, the visitors stated that they would see the rocking chairs frantically move and then stop as if someone got up off of the chairs. Also, 
the rumors of the slave dying underneath the penhook and the bricked room may explain some of the thumping noises that guests have complained about hearing at night while staying there. Present day. Many different owners have claimed the Penhook Plantation House over the last few decades. The property was actually sold in 2018 to become a bed and breakfast. The interior was refurbished for the establishment to make its new debut. It currently sits on 500 Riverside acres in all of its vintage glory. However, recent internet searches show that the Penhook Plantation bed and breakfast is now permanently closed as of October 4th, 2022. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is going to complete our episode 8 of the Haunted Hometown Horror Stories uh, for 2022 we have one more to go thank you so much for tuning in and watching i will see you on the next video please be sure to like share and subscribe hit that notification bell for more videos just like this including our last one for the series this year i will see you all next time until next time protect your energy and guard your soul and don't share it with nobody else bye